People, you have just tuned in to the R&B Money Podcast. I'm Tank. This is Jay Valentine, and we are the authorities on R&B music. And in the building, uh, all the way yeah. uh, from yeah. Milwaukee, yeah. Mill, Mill Town, <laughs> huh? huh? Anything with Mill in it, Mill do. <laughs> My brother from another mother, oh. Eric Benet. Give me some elbow, oh. man. Give me some elbow, boy. Yeah. Man, thanks for the invite, man. Come on, man. I've been waiting to come up in this <laughs> motherfucker. Listen, his, we want this. We want to kick this thing off the right way. Mm-hmm. Okay, we want to kick this off the right mm-hmm. way in honor. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay, yeah. in yeah. honor yeah. of Eric Benet. Okay, let me tell you something. I'm let not me worthy. tell you something. I'm not worthy. First of all. All you, all of a sudden, organic people. <laughs> yeah. All yeah, of a sudden, yeah. all you in touch with the earth people. Uh, right. All oh, hopeful. Oh, oh, right. Oh, all oh. of a sudden, you. Right. That shit did not food. exist. It did. Right. Listen, I'm gonna tell you, who started this shit. Okay. Uh. There was a man. Yeah. Walking barefoot. Barefoot. Huh? He had already had seashells attached to strings and shit. Yeah. And we was trying to figure out how is he doing this. <laughs> Cockle shells in the How dreadlock. Is he? Listen, I'm trying to tell you, every girl I knew, every was like, oh my God, Eric Benet. I'm like, nigga with no shoes on? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, I love Eric Benet. And I'm looking at my Timberland boots like. <laughs> Still so, representing. So, Got on sandals right now, to, nigga. So in honor of Eric Benet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We yeah. are not yeah. wearing oh, shoes today. Oh, shit. Huh? Yes. Yes. We no so shoes. Nervous, I'm going to get rid of my Air Jesus right here, man. <laughs> Look at that, man. Put these shits right Why's over here. White Air Jesus. We ain't Air Jesus. Here's the thing. It was Eric Benet. Uh. Lenny Kravitz. Show up. Yeah. Show up. Maxwell. Uh-huh. A very small group of elite organic Men. And we all smell like patchouli. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Back, back then. But it sounds sound <laughs> like see, something see, the ladies like. Patchouli. I, that's that. Remember, he would be on Venice Beach and the nigga be selling the, the oils and shit. Oils? Oh, I got some patchouli for you. Yeah, yeah, that's what that was. Yeah. Yeah. See, this, he been doing this. So frankincense and myrrh. Eventually, <laughs> eventually <laughs> now y'all come into terms. Yeah. Now you've got yeah. your feet up. Huh? Yeah, yes. Now you, yeah. now you, now you natural. Now you hold. He been doing it, yeah. and the women have been going. So let me ask you a question. Yes. <laughs> let me ask you a question. Please do. Was that because I want to talk about the bare feet thing no, too? No, but no. Go ahead. Was go that ahead. on? Was that on purpose? Like, right. did you know going into this? Like, I'm gonna give them something, something They've different. I'm gonna give them something vulnerable. Right. Something. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. A different kind of thing. I feel essence. very vulnerable with my, with my feet out. Yeah, yeah I, I do. I'm, I do. But, I, I, but I'm comfortable. I'm gonna but tell I'm you about that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little surface with it, and then I'm gonna go deep. Okay. 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 Right. So when I was first signed, back in 1900, mm-hmm. it was me and my sister. Mm-hmm. We were called Benet. We were first. My re- first record deal was with EMI Records, mm-hmm. and so you know we came up in you know, Milwaukee, we did like the clubs, we would do like the obscure uh, cities in Michigan and Illinois, and then we got our record deal. And I was always used to looking to my left and seeing my sister right there. Okay. First record deal didn't work out so good. My sister was like, baby brother, you go ahead. It's music business shit crazy. I'm gonna go get me a job. Oh wow. So my dumb ass hung in there a little bit longer and I got my solo deal. Once I got my solo deal, I started to have to perform by myself. I was not used to that. The stage fright, when you are used to looking over and see your family member and all of a sudden it's me out there, it was was like I'd be backstage a little debilitated, just like stage fright would, would, would come on me like that. So I discovered one day that if I just took my shoes off and went out on the stage, I relaxed. I felt Almost grounded. like you felt at home. I felt at home. And a byproduct was, of that was women, apparently, I must have had a good foot day or something, and they'd be like, oh, look at his feet. And I was like, oh, y'all like this shit? Okay, I'll keep doing it, because it makes me feel great. Wow. So, let me flash forward. That's great. I'm going to flash forward to something that I've recently, I told you I was going to go deep. Mm-hmm. 
something that I've just discovered, which you're probably hip to, you're so health conscious and you too. But um, there's such a thing as called grounding and earthing. Have you heard of this? Yes. Yeah. So basically grounding is the science based upon the fact that the earth is just one big battery full of negative electrons. We as human beings are basically electric beings. We're full of positive electrons. But when we walk around with shoes on all the time, especially rubber sole shoes, we are insulating ourselves from those negative, uh, negative electrons, which balances our body mm -hmm. and reduces inflammation, makes us healthy, makes us sleep better, makes sex more boy. Yeah. So, exactly. so basically, I've since discovered, which I didn't know back then, that shit just keeps me healthy. It keeps me young. It makes me feel, yeah. makes me feel like I'm 20 years younger than I am. At least an hour a day, I will walk around outside barefoot, in the dirt, in the sand, in the grass. Wow. Yeah, it's real shit. You know what? In, in, mm. in thinking about that, I used to always wonder why my country cousins. Healthy as shit. Were, were so far ahead they were part of the elements. Evolved. They were faster they were, than you. They were faster. They were stronger, <laughs> they were stronger than me. Right, right. Like, exactly. they was driving. I was like, you're not. Right. How are you driving? <laughs> we just, just hop in the car, bro. Bruh, you and me both. Because where's your family from? My, my Mobile, Alabama. I got Alabama. I got I got uh, all, all, all over Alabama. Um, Birmingham, specifically. I got Arkansas, Little Rock, all through there. And then they all migrated. They migrated. That's how they got to Milwaukee and to Detroit. But you, you, know are, you are speaking the truth. Like, we would go down to Alabama, and then my other, I'd be 10 years old, and my other 10-year-old cousins be, like, driving, got girlfriends Man, and they shit. they got everything. Like, <laughs> they got everything. Like, we going to see these goods around the corner. You want to go? I'm, I'm like, I ain't I, had my I first kiss yet. Can't can go. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do when we get to <laughs> Right, there. exactly. Crack right. a joke, but they, they was ready to get to it. They was like, yeah, and then I had two girls last night. Like, what's right. it, what are you doing So what you're saying with the, with the whole barefoot thing is that we shouldn't make jokes about the little drunk white girls after the club. Because they need those negative electrons. You know what? You know what, Jay? We can still make fun of the drunk white girls. Let's, let's keep that funny. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just wondering, man, how that all works. All right, let's tap into the music, man. Yeah, man. Um, um, let's go. It to, let's go to the beginning, right? Yeah. We like we like to go to like the introduction of okay. of you to music mm. and music to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Bro. Like the complete where you're the like, whole story. No, I mean you can break it down into pieces, yeah. but the the part where it's where you said, you know. Where it claimed you, because normally it claims you first, mm -hmm. right? The, the, you don't know what the gift is. You don't even know true. that you have a gift. True. Um, you know a that lot you're of people able, didn't even know you were in a group. Yeah. You, true, true, you, true. You're, you're able to do things that you just think you're able to do. And then there's a moment where you recognize, oh, yeah. You really, hit, a, you really hit on something right there. Because I remember, as far back as I, I can remember, um, you know, Milwaukee, in grade school, 65th Street School, and Capitol Drive. Um, you know, something as simple as music class. <clears throat> I just remember having an ability to sing and understand music on a level that was way above like the rest of the kids. And what I would do, I don't know if you did this, but because I didn't want to stick out and be weird, I acted like I was on their level. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't, I don't want too much attention on me right now. It's like, you know, the music teacher would tell us, okay, class, it's like, here's the scale or here's the song. And it's like, I'd already be like five steps ahead of them. And little Timmy over here and Dondrell over here is like completely clueless. And I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna act like I'm struggling too. Isn't that weird? No, that was me in sixth and seventh grade. Yeah. And so I was just kind of like staying here and then somebody mm. be like, oh, you really sing. Right. Just, uh, right, right, right. It was, it was almost like this. Yeah, I play I football. Nobody to know. <laughs> I play football and basketball. <laughs> My well, teacher, you had that going. My teacher's like, you sing, you, will you sing? I'm like, I don't, I don't, right, 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 right. I don't know if I want to. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because my cousin was the lead singer. My cousin Keisha was the one who was doing all the solos. And then when I finally tried a solo, I tricked it off really bad. <laughs> right, you know right, what I'm right. I was like, Auntie, right. how'd I do? She's like, you was off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so suck. I went back into training. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so so you're starting there and you're in what and what group about what time is it? So this is, I mean, this is grade school. And then when I go home, like I'm, I'm the youngest of a group of five siblings. 
we're all musical. We all sing. So that so was the place, house. the whole house, from, okay. from my mom playing the piano. My dad didn't really sing, but he had this extensive classical music collection. So I would be in my dad's music collection, listen to Tchaikovsky and Brahms and Mozart. And then with my sisters and my brother, we would sing. We would listen to like the Silvers or the Carpenters, and we would deconstruct the harmonies and like, you know, sing them. And I, you know, before my voice changed, I'd have the soprano. Mm -hmm. So, so he was Michael Jackson. Yeah, I was Michael Jackson. <laughs> I, I was a little Michael, Michael Jackson. Established that. <laughs> so that's where music, that's really, people ask me who's my biggest influence. My biggest influence are my older siblings mm -hmm. because I've always equated music to love because that's how we, that's how we would have fun together. That's how we would show each other our love, like, like making music. So, but outside the house, it was almost like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to keep that talent close to my vest because it comes off a little too um, overpowering for people outside the family circle. Now, then puberty happened. Mm. So I've always been like the nerdy, and I, you know, I kind of still am. I've always been like the nerdy science fiction book reading, um, you know, into writing my own little weird stories and making up my own songs. And so I've always been that little kid, even in like 13 and 14, where I, I would stick to myself um, and like I said, I still wasn't singing publicly in school, but I remember when puberty hit, there was a, a singing competition and nobody really knew I sung. There was a singing competition in junior high school and my sisters told me, go ahead, Eric, enter the contest. And keep in mind, I'm 13 now and my, all my siblings are beasts. And that's when I come 13 home. Is, 13 is what? Seven, seven, eight, seven, seven, yeah, eight grade. seventh grade, yeah. middle school. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so I just grew up with older siblings who literally could deconstruct the song and we would put it back together. So I was at 13, I was dope. Yeah. So I entered the contest. Nobody really knew I could sing. Bruh, I sang Lionel Richie's Truly. Mm. I kill that shit, mm. bro. I killed that shit. Like, <laughs> you know, that's still a problem. I mean, no, no offense, Lionel, <laughs> hey, man, but at 13, I probably sang that shit better than he you, man. Respect it. He can respect it. But you, 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 you respect it, bruh. Can I tell you, the next day at school, there were two girls I had crushes on that did not know I existed. They were waiting at my locker the next morning. I was like, "There's something to this shit." <laughs> Both of them. Both of them. <laughs> Both of them, Vicky Stanton, Vicky oh. Stanton, hey. and Laura Oldenburg. Hey. Oh, shout out, oh. <laughs> shout out to them. Oh, to what's them. up, Vicky? Hey, Vicky. Hey. Vicky Stanton, Laura Oldenburg. What's Oldenburg. Up? Oldenburg. Yeah, that was equal opportunity I'll back then. You were early there too. You were early there too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't learn about equal opportunity until way later in my fifth. I don't even know if I know no Oldenburgs ah. right now. Oh, shit. <laughs> Laura, where are you at? <laughs> no. Uh, but yeah, and from there, you know, from there, it was just like my cousin George, who was always like the musician, the musician of the family. My George, cousin George played, you know, he was like, he was like, played piano and he played the guitar and he was just dope. And my cousin George and my sister Lisa and I, we started writing songs. Then I dropped out of college, UW Milwaukee, joined this band, and uh, then we got our first record deal, the one I told you about, Benet, mm -hmm. me and my sister. That's a dope name too. Yeah. Really so between, time-wise, when you guys get your first deal, mm -hmm. to when you get your deal and get your first hit record. A lot of shit happened between that and me having a solo deal. So uh, <clears throat> what's, what's, the, what's the time frame? So we're talking about, I, we signed uh, the Benet deal with EMI Capital in 92. Okay. Pluck from Milwaukee, in Los Angeles, and that was just culture shock, man. That was just, just really culture. Yeah, yeah. He's that been was, there. The, yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, bro. It was, I mean, I love Milwaukee, but it's like you come out to LA in the early 90s, it was a whole nother expansive universe of from musical, like the community of badass music dudes mm -hmm. to like the most beautiful women you've ever seen in your life right. to like the people who. The, a hell of a lot of bullshitters, <laughs> but but a lot of people who are on a higher level of consciousness, mm -hmm. like talking about eating right, and you know, you go back home to Milwaukee and you just eat a vat it's, of pork. It's just, it it, you it know, is. it's like salt pork, you mm -hmm. eat it, but, but come out here and it's like, no, you know, it's like 
higher level of taking care of your, your mind and your body. So it was just like culture shock all, all the way around. And that's 92. That's 92. That record did not work out. Um, as everybody in the in industry has these stories where your first management deal, your first record deal, it's like, well, they kind of sort of put a single out, but didn't really put any money behind it. So we got dropped. Right, it was, it, this was one of the hardest times in my life because a few years prior, my, my father died. My father was a, a detective for the city of Milwaukee. So dad died. Um, my, uh, my girlfriend, um, Tammy Stauff, we became parents. Wow. We became parents, India. Um, short, my daughter, India, shortly after I got dropped, Tammy died in a car accident. Wow. So now I lost my record deal. Dad's gone. I'm all of a sudden single dad. And I'm just trying to figure out, wow, how am I going to do this? Thank God I have the family I have. Because between my mom and my sisters and my brother, they would let me, like I could take India. India was only 15 months old when her mother died. <clears throat> so I have the most amazing family in the world because I could... You know, if I had to fly out to L.A. to talk to some people who were thinking about signing me, you know, as a parent, especially as a single parent, you need to know that your children or your child safe. Is, is safe and taken care of and loved. And I never had to worry about that when I was out there trying to make the dream happen. Um, I basically got a, a, a gig in Milwaukee as an assistant engineer at a recording studio on, Cap, on, on Fond du Lac. Okay. <laughs> and... I, between George and this crazy ass dude who is one of the baddest keyboards ever, DeMonte, you know DeMonte, do you know DeMonte Posey? Nigga's bad. Anyway, he's from Milwaukee also. Mm -hmm. Met DeMonte and my, my cousin George during the off hours at the, at the recording studio that I was working, they would let me use the studio to record demos. Right. Mm -hmm. So between me, George and DeMonte, we just started writing all these songs, writing all these demos. That demo, the, all those demos turned out to be my first album, the first solo Eric Benet, True to Myself album. No way, which is amazing. Yes. Thank Crazy. you, sir. Crazy. Thank you, sir. Yes, it's, wow. it's, a, it's an incredible story. It's, I'm riding with a girl through DC. Was it Psy? Mm. It might have been Psy. That's another beast. <laughs> Si, what's been, up, Sai? It might have been Sai. She's a beast. Yeah, might have been Sai. And she did, oh, you got to hear this new Eric Benet. I'm like, Eric really? Benet. She played that. Uh, she played that femininity. Oh shit! Yeah. And at that time, I didn't know how to pronounce it for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> femininity. Hey, that's all I like. It. <laughs> shit, yeah. Hey. And I was like, everything that's for me was John P. Key, was right. Kim Burrell, it was right. Fred Hammond, and Crash Cut, and them. Like, it, <laughs> it, it was, it was, it was all that. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So when you tell me to listen to something like right. you know, at this point, I have every run in the book downloaded. Uh, That's how I live my life. I run. Okay. Yeah. I don't want a and first you, verse. Well, no, no, wait. Let's I ain't not, got no first verse. Let's not gliss over that. That you nigga, you don't just run, you just you kill it. At you, that time you clean, though, you clean I kill only it. ran. Yeah. Nigga, I ain't have no verse melody <laughs> at all. I'm gonna run this whole thing for five minutes. So so if you ain't doing that, right. I don't want to hear it. Right, right, yeah, right, 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 right. If you're not running through the whole song. <laughs> and she started playing this song and I'm listening to the thing. I'm like, <laughs> you start making the faces and shit, right? That's interesting. <laughs> right. That's interesting. And the vocal was so clean. Oh man, thank and you. Straight ahead. Thank you, bro. And I was like, who is this again? Who is that? <laughs> After she didn't already told you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. and then, and then you did something that we do in church. What did I do? So it was about the three and a half, close to four minute mark. You did a vamp, okay? <laughs> you let the band play for a minute, uh, and then you went into a vamp. Yeah, that's this 1970s <laughs> shit right there. Oh yeah, femininity. <laughs> I said, ooh. Right. This nigga's vamping. Right. This nigga vamping. I was so at that point. Man, thank when you, you for that. you went into a vamp, I was so. Coming yeah. from I your said, ass. I said, you're a problem. Coming from man. your ass. And then man, even, I know we'll, we'll get to we'll get to the, the later in the 2000s, but then you started going digging into your falsetto with the uh, uh, I Cry? Sometimes, Sometimes I, I Cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That bothered me. <laughs> <laughs> I took issue with that. I, I, I took... <laughs> <laughs> 
I took it that, that I felt personally attacked. Okay? Okay? And what George said, I took that, I took that personally. Because I'm on phone back like this. <laughs> why is this nigga? Oh. Why is his falsetto so clear? Oh I know God. he's older than me. Oh my I know God. he is. <laughs> it's the Ooh. earth he's been connected it's with. The feet. It's the feet. It's the grounding <laughs> with the toes. I, and, and, the and, dress. I, and I hear you sing that on stage, and you didn't miss a note. Wow. A yeah. note. And yeah. I'm a falsetto. That's what I do. You're known for that. Yeah, no. No, no, no. Well, no. Thank like, you. Literally, not just a falsetto, right? You're known for not missing. Thank you. Which you, is, as, as guys, we all sing, right? We, we've been around a thousand singers. But you know where that comes but from. But not missing is a different type of gift. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's just that's, that's, that's just special. Like, you'll talk to somebody, especially me being from the Bay. Me and my brother was talking about it. And he's like, man. Because he's the first person to put me on to you. That's right? what's up. And he went to go see you at Yoshi's. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yoshi's is fun game. And he was like, Yoshi. nigga, he didn't miss. I said, what you mean? <laughs> and you know, as singers, we all know what that means. But I had to ask again. I'm like, what you mean? He didn't miss? That's a huge compliment. He's like, he didn't miss. All and you night. know about this. That comes from that comes from going through the ranks. Like, yeah. like, okay, so I dropped out of college, but my college was being in those shitty clubs all over the Midwest. Ha right, having to, it's a drunk crowd. This nigga over here is about to start a fight with this nigga. There's some, something going over here. I'm gonna have to like take command of this whole room and I'm gonna have to do it consistently. And maybe I wasn't able to do it for the first six months I was in the band, but it was a honing process mm -hmm. where a lot of artists today they don't have that honing process. No, they process. might they might they be in their process. lab, in their base, in their we mama's business. We talked about that earlier. We yeah, doing some earlier. beats, mm -hmm. put a couple loops on it, you know, and they got all kind of technology. Catch a record and now you they catch out a, there. Catch a, catch a record and then you put them on stage and it's like, nah, you didn't go through the process, bro. I can tell. Well, I mean, they're not invest. They're not investing in the process. Right. Anymore. I don't even know if the pro does the process. Is there any reverence for it anymore? No. Yeah, there should yeah. be. There should no, be, but I don't, I don't really be. think there like, is. We're we're like probably the last of I the think Mohicans right. who are who are looking for people who are actually just just seasoned in, seasoned in some type of growth, absolutely, in some type of development, absolutely. Like it's taken us years to find an artist, right? Because we're like. Nah, but they hot in their hometown. They got this record above them, but you that's you so see fleeting. It in the and like that's so fleeting. I, rem not I remember, like, one of, one of the things that I so appreciate y'all telling me that. That means a lot to me. Um, I remember a couple times in my career, and as artists, I guess there's always some level, at least for me, there's always some level of insecurity. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember when I first got signed, I first started doing my solo deal, and you're doing the rounds at the radio stations, and Luther Vandross was just leaving an interview <laughs> and and Luther was like I'm the type of dude where it's like if I know Luther is there I at least want to just say thank you I don't I don't want to crowd you I just mm -hmm. want to say thank you but Luther found out I was there he's like oh no 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 you tell him to come here when somebody like Luther looks at you and say you know what you doing it right mm. you know and that's all I needed if, mm. if, if <laughs> Luther looks so at me hard. All I right, that's it. Before. So it's like, if you thought I was dope before, that's probably when you heard me go in the studio and do that falsetto Man. shit. I'm like, let me show these niggas what's uh. You know, so it's like, when you get, when somebody like that, wow. like a Maurice White or a Luther Vandross or David Foster, wow. that just makes me want to, oh shit. If I thought I was honing my craft before, right. I'm gonna have to I'm, like, I'm really, tapping I, I, I'm really going in deep wow. now. So it's those kinds of things that make me continue to, 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 to strive to be better. To this day. Yeah, yeah. The hunger doesn't go away. You know, the grind, the hustle yeah. never, never goes away. So when you get that first hit record, right? Because Tank spoke about it a little bit, right? How you, you know, you pulled up on him with the shoes off, toes right, right, right. out. Right. Showing, you know what I mean? Showing him showing something different. Showing out. Right. Showing him something different. And definitely showing out. Showing out. What is the influx like? Yeah. <laughs> Man, let me. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. When you catch that, you catch that record. <laughs> you, you fresh from Milwaukee. 
Milwaukee. Yes. You fresh from Milwaukee. You yes. get a major Ooh, hit yeah. record, mm-hmm. and but you don't. But you also don't get the run of the mill wow. hit record. You get a record that nobody's heard before. You don't get the some producer was did that record and then your producer heard it mm-hmm. and y'all recreated right. it and now you get that little cheat code hit. Yeah. You had a record that set you apart from the gate. Yeah. Right? So they it's a different it's a different level it's that's a, it's, coming it's, your it's, way. It's, it's a di- it's a different kind of vibe because back then um there were like you said, I mean when you think about what I was doing back then and what cats like D'Angelo were doing back then and like Maxwell were doing back then, that was outside of the norm. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. It was sure. like Maxwell was brushing his teeth. Right. This video. Like it's like, right. I'm sorry, this nigga's teeth. brushing his teeth. He don't care at all. And they love it. Right. Right. <laughs> so so we um it it was just kind of like this feeling of I don't know being that kind of a creative person the people who I work with when I'm in the lab and I've been I've I like to go check in on like how see how lots of people work a lot of people like to work like they like to check out what's hot right now like what drum, what what kick sounds are hot right now you know what's happening in the top 10 mm-hmm. and I'm going to try to put my own spin on that but I've never really worked I've never really worked that way even back then I always dig from a more um intimate place like even musically like I I've never wanted to try to emulate the other things that are happening out there and when you work like that you're working in a bubble at least I am you're working on this no I want to be cut off from everything that's like top 10 top 20 on the radio right Mm -hmm. now Mm -hmm. I just want to be in like this little fortress of musical solitude with myself and whoever I invite to come in there and create with me all that to say as we're doing that we don't i don't really know how this is working like a motherfucker in here but i don't know how that's going to play out there because it's like so intimate to us and we're like nerdy music heads Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's kind of it was like i was surprised i in a way i was surprised because um we were signed to i was signed to warner brothers as a solo artist and they really did just leave me alone they let me just do my thing and then when i turned the record in there was a reaction like somebody just reinvented the wheel and i was like really it was it was just incredibly surprising because like i said um i was grateful um and it it was at least it was affirming that i felt like okay right. i'm gonna just you had seen the bottom i'd already had huge loss personal loss in my life my the, the mother of my daughter dying all of a sudden i'm a solo dad, uh, single father, trying to figure out the next move. I was working at UPS. When I told you I was working at the studio, I was also working at UPS uh, and working at the studio to make, you know, to make a little bread. So it's like, I saw the bottom. And once I knew that, oh, you mean I can win by just being completely authentic and in my appreciation for music, not the music industry, but like music. I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna switch it up. This from is here. what it is, yeah. And yeah. that's a, and that's a very unique situation. Right? That's very as, unique. As all of us have yeah. been in this music business for so long, to actually, it's it's like getting drafted to the right team, mm. because Warner worked for you, but Universal may have not. Right. You know what exactly. I mean? Or EMI didn't. Yeah. They you know what I mean? So it's like, and in, in, in that space, man, that that in itself, and you know, we try to give that type of information. When we when we do these interviews for people that are trying to get in the music business, God bless you for in that. the bu- in the business to understand, like this shit just don't happen right. the right. way you want it at that time. Right. So, and you got to keep pushing. You got to keep pushing, and until you find that situation right. that makes the most sense for you. Exactly. But we got off of the influx that came with this hit ah, no, no, you, no, no, you talking, no. you talking, you see no, how I did that? No, did, you, no. did, did you see how I tried no, to do that? I, yeah, I knew he, was, uh, I knew he wasn't going to let it in. I'm from, I'm from the Bay Area, man. I knew he right. wasn't going to let you, you We know, surrounded by the water. Right. Tough through and around, right. and we baptized in it. I'll tell so, you this. i tell I'm you this. i hear it. A lot of people don't believe this. 
But actually, now that you now that you know me, you can believe it. Like I've always been the nerdy dude. Like I've always been the. If it wasn't for music, if it wasn't for me being on a stage and singing, like my game, like my just step up to a girl game was was garbage. Like I had no idea you how to. Need it though. But I didn't know I didn't need it right. because okay. you know what I'm saying. So okay, so then you got this guy who's basically. Uh, uh, looking at women feeling like I don't really have that much of a shot to being on stage, having a hit song, and having them literally come to me. It was overwhelming. And I'm, I'm going to say this. That's one of the most, like, if you're not ready for that kind of attention. <clears throat> Man, speak on it. Speak you, on it. You will die. <laughs> you, or, you things, or things you around can. you will. Yeah, yes, right. or, or, yes. Things or things around, around you, you will. will. Because it is an awesome, um, and I don't use the word awesome like, well, it can be great, but it is, it is an overwhelming uh, uh, power. And if you are an insecure person who always idolized women but didn't know how to talk to them, and all of a sudden you're the guy that they're coming at to talk to you, that could be a very dangerous thing. Yeah. And there is a process <laughs> where, you know, for some of us it takes a year or two or ten. Or ten. <laughs> <laughs> where, you feel me? Where it's I'm, like I'm in that 10, 15 years. <laughs> you just jumped another five. I was, I was gonna, gonna say that too. I'm but in that 10, 15 years. You know I I need a little bit more time. You know what I'm saying? A lot of my, lot of my kind of fun <laughs> I to, mean, to reel this thing in. Right. <laughs> because it's like all of a sudden I can have all of it. It's, it's, Are you fucking kidding me? It right. it was I like like Speak on it, man. Come on. You stuttering now. Milwaukee. Speak on it. Milwaukee. <laughs> Maryland. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. LA. Mm. Now now I got a I got a taste when I went on tour with Genuine. Yeah, it, that, it, it, was that like, was diabolical. it was a heavy taste. Yeah, that was, was it that was a taste. It was the taste that changed my life. <laughs> no, no, I, listen, I definitely put the punch oh, bowl. You like were like, you go, <laughs> like you, the punch bowl. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yes, you uh, are correct in that. Oh man, and, I know, I know. And, and genuine would say to me, "This is cool. <laughs> I know you having the time of your life, but it ain't nothing like when it's you." And I didn't believe him. I kept saying, I'm never leaving you. <laughs> I'm going to sing I'm background for you. Sing forever. For you forever. But you still do though, so which is I funny. still do I would do Like everywhere yeah, we right, go, right, right. if Genuine's on stage and we got a show that's together, dope. he finds a way to sing background to get for you. That's dope. To that's this dope. day. I love so that. it's like <clears throat> And then I when didn't it's get you what he was saying. But then when it was when it's me, you. listen, when I watched, when I watched, maybe I deserve um start charting and me going from clubs Woo! With speak on like, that man you know what was that like a hundred people to a thousand people, people to seven hundred people to a thousand people to ten thousand to ten and then to co-headlining radio shows and right. arenas and then London Chris and 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 Nelly you know and and Ja Rule Jesus Christ Rice. Yeah, they used to you put, have to be in a Tank certain. All the R and B shows. I mean, all the uh, all the, the hip hop shows. shows. I'm all the rap shows. Because my name was Tank, <laughs> and so sometimes they wouldn't even listen to my music. They just saw they my just picture with Tank my chest. Like, oh, put them on there. That's hilarious. You got a hit record? Yeah, it's cool. Okay. So, 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 like, you take you. I just I was dropped in a church kid. Still, I'm still trying. You know, I so still it's pray a lot. The, it's kind of similar. The it's same. still biblical for me. It's still spiritual, Lord. If you just guide me tonight, I'll let me just. I won't do it Lord, tomorrow. I, if you just let me get this tonight, I'm not gonna do it no <laughs> more. Be like Lord, please guide me tonight. Then you be like, Lord, why did why did her ass have to look like that? Lord, you did Man, not have to. Lord, do Lord, you made this. You did that. You made. You did. You did this. <laughs> Oh my and, god. And I honestly was not ready. No, you were not. I was not. There is no man. And and people people don't understand this, bro. Like you get it. There is no man on this planet who works at Home Depot or who's working at Wells Fargo right now who uh, if you throw him in this situation, if you just throw him in the 
whatever you want situation, it will kill him. Right. It, it will suck the life out of him. And so it's like you have to be in a certain mental, emotional preparedness, uh, which I was not. But like I said, it, it will take some years and you have to live with some consequences. Like right. a, right. Some consequences, the, the, some losses. Some losses, some, some yeah. consequences. Yeah. And it's like, wow. I need to reevaluate a lot of shit, bro. So, but there's, you can't be ready for that. And, and I think on the other side of that, the, the upbringing and all of these things mm -hmm. and having the family structure that we had family is everything prepared us in a different way True. to where we would be able to survive. Right. Because yeah. a, lot saying? Saying? Because right. a lot of people would not. No, right. a lot of people just don't. No, right. And, 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 for you, you did it on a very public stage, right? Because right, 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 you know right, right. what you were involved in. So yeah, it was like, and anytime it's yeah, on a public stage, it's, mag the, it's a million. It, it's not only times. magnified a million times, but there is a certain uh, there is a narrative that they want to tell. Right. To you know, now it's clickbait, but it's like oh. to sell magazines, yeah, yeah. to mm -hmm. do this. Um, so things are spawn a certain way, mm -hmm. and then. On the very tiny nucleus of what's happening on the inside, there are details that no one else knows, and maybe I'll never share, but it's like, it ain't what y'all think. Right, you know, right. Mistakes right. were made. I've taken accountability Absolutely. for what I've done. I've grown from, from that. Man does. Yeah. But yeah. from the celebrity, the, any celebrity out there who's dealing with that relationship and the press shit, that's, 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 a, that's a hard thing. It is what it is. And it's no, part, and it's, part and of the course. Yeah. It's even harder now yeah. With social media. Oh my God. It's even oh harder now, right? Because oh my back God. then, Thank they God used to just have no to try to media. see you and take a picture of you and then write whatever they wanted. But exactly. Now, you get tired of it or they get tired of it and now you make it's your own comment. Right. It's and you start t typing shit and now you're like, fuck, maybe I should have. Yeah, maybe I should have just. I'm going to delete that. Right. Well, Too late. Nigga, they've already seen it. It's out. It's, been, it's out. <laughs> right. It's out there. He, he used to call me in the morning. <laughs> oh. He'll call me about seven in the morning. What the fuck, Tank? <laughs> Why did you respond what are you doing? to what's her name? Kiki975 <laughs> saying some bullshit. He said, Can you stop this? And I'd be on the other line and say, no. <laughs> You'd be on the other Ah! <laughs> <laughs> on, man. And then one no. day I just tell him, I said, I said, the other part I said, the same way. I said, but I get that. I said, Tank, what you got to realize, too? A lot of times you're talking to ghosts. True, true, true. You're true, true, literally true, true, talking true, true, to ghosts. True, yeah. true, true, true. Like, true. yes, are there some people that are real people that are going at you? But sometimes it's just accounts right. that are made right. to literally Absolutely. get a rise out of you. Well, they and, be getting a rise. Uh, out what? <laughs> well, I'm like, come on, dog. Come on now, dog. Sometimes that should be worth it. Can, you, can, you, be just, can you just stop <laughs> arguing on Instagram? Right. Can you do it for me for two uh, weeks? Right, right, right. Please. I'm right. like, no, they have to hear from me. <laughs> I have to tell them. <laughs> no, nah, that's just not easy. Nah. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's, that's a tough one. I have this outlook on life mistakes that might be a little different because, granted, in the moment, they feel like the exact wrong thing that you've allowed to happen or you've participated in happening or that has happened to you. Um, but in my 54 years on this earth, you 54? I, I am 54. Man, you don't know Come on, man. I Let's drink know to that, that shit. I did not know that. <clears throat> Nigga, I, ain't, I don't think I'm buying no more shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Grounding. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Grounding. Oh, man. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. What I've learned is mistakes all of them and this is going to sound like some cliche you see on the instagram with a lion in the background or some shit <laughs> but or, or from some nigga that's just a terrible human right that writes the greatest <laughs> right right, right, right and he's probably horrible well <laughs> 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 the girls i'm talking about some certain people but I don't know. Or, or, or the he's a terrible human uh, right <laughs> Or the Instagram models with the ass, and it'd be yeah. like inner growth is spiritual. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. it's like, you know, I got some growth for you. It'd be like, it'd be like, only God can, you know, anyway. So, so what the fuck? What was I saying? Oh, mistakes. Mistakes. <laughs> only God. Yeah, I know. That's great. Right? I got to use that. Mistakes for me have all been an opportunity to grow. 
Okay. So, yes, I have made mistakes in my life. Um, and I feel like, and I think it goes back, I think it goes back to something, something you hit on, the parenting thing. Uh, my mom and dad instilled in me a long time ago, like, you are going to make a lot of mistakes in your life. What do you do with those mistakes? What do you do with those traumatic events in your life? So when I have um, stumbled, when I've fallen, or when I've made mistakes in business or in my personal life, you know, I take a moment to fall back and see, okay, God, what was the lesson you were trying to teach me with this one? Sometimes those lessons are obvious as hell, and sometimes they're not so obvious. But every time it happens, it's, it's an opportunity to be a better version of yourself. Mm -hmm. My first record deal, um, to answer uh, a question that deals with more of a professional situation. My first record deal that I did with my sister, Benet, it was an incredible opportunity. It was uh, two kids being plucked out of Milwaukee, coming to LA, seeing things and experiencing things that I only saw on Magnum PI wow. <laughs> and stuff like that, you know. But uh, the record label didn't really give us autonomy, didn't really give us control to make all of the music we wanted to make, to pick the producers that we necessarily uh, wanted to work with, or, or at least we felt like, I shouldn't say that, because there was a lot of energy on my part where I felt like I doubted myself enough as that 20-something-year-old kid who, well, I certainly can't know, so if, they tell, if they're telling me I should work with this artist and that artist, then I, I guess I should. That was a mistake. That was a mistake, and that's a mistake that every young artist like needs to know right now. The reason why they on your shit right now, young artist out there, the reason why you're getting the attention you're getting is because you're dope. <laughs> because the creative sure. decisions you make are are and, dope. That led you here. Mm -hmm. Don't doubt yeah. that. Mm -hmm. You know, like lead with that. Don't let somebody else who've who's been on their own journey and have seen their own ascent to fame and fortune um, tell you this is how I did it. So you need to do it. You need to do it like this. Look, some of those lessons that they bestow on you are appropriate, and you can use that. But their path is not your path. Yeah. So I think that's probably one of the biggest um, l uh, lessons that I learned. I think I learned early from that mistake. That's why when I had an opportunity to do the solo album in '96, the Eric Benet record, I was like, "Look, okay, we can do this record deal thing, but I have to." be in charge of everything from the way I dress to the way I look to the songs on the album. I told you like the whole album, my first album was like the demo between my cousin George and DeMonte and me just met. So um, I need to be in control to the point where I named my first album True to Myself Yeah, because I had been through the whole, uh, the alternative. Yeah. I could only imagine Eric Benet coming out as like the fifth member of Jodeci with like a lesson. Bruh. With some lesson. You know, <laughs> because that's the type of shit that that's happens. That's what they was though. on. Bruh. That's and what the they niggas was on. is great, but yes. it's like, it's not you. You are at, somebody tried to get see, me in like see, a three, see, nigga. Use the album. Try, <laughs> tried to get me in like a three boy band group where it was oh, me. I was the singing nigga and it was like this dark nigga from, from like Nigeria or something and it was a white nigga who would sing. <laughs> Who, who would I sing. thought I'm the only one that say white nigga. <laughs> who would do, and it was like, I almost did it. And this was before my first record deal. I was like, and great. I was in the meeting with the two guys and they were like, come on, bro, this is our chance. You know, if you don't like it, you know, we could blow up and then you can do your own thing. I was like, yeah, but I don't know, this, this ain't for me. So you're absolutely right, man. It's like, you gotta, you gotta. You gotta be true to yourself. You got to be true to yourself. You have to be honest oh, enough with yourself to yeah. know your gut, to know your soul, so that yeah. when something doesn't vibrate right with you, mm -hmm. you are the first to know yeah. <laughs> yep. and, and, and act upon that. No matter how old I get, I'm still that hungry, young, creative dude from Milwaukee, no matter what happens. So when Shout out to Milwaukee. Shout out to Milwaukee. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, Wisconsin came through, didn't they? With that orange. Uh... Hold up. Hold up. You know what? And that's, that's okay. <laughs> Movie star, uh, writer. All of that. Um, let's pivot to that because, you know, I, I don't really do a whole lot of politics, you know. Sometimes I'll be going off. And listen, <laughs> you 
<laughs> in between you and DL Hughley. Oh my God, DL! Right, 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 right. right. Y'all are out there. I think that's the old the man. Political. That's the old man in me. You are out there. The old man shit is real because once you get to a certain age, it's like I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna just say you are saying yeah. it. I remember when I first started doing it, my management was like, "Yeah, Eric, you know." <laughs> that's how I, I start saying, you know. We really respect that you want to voice your opinion, but we, we got to remember there's there are people out there who like your music who aren't exactly on the same political. Like fuck that, man. We talking about a a damn, you know, shit. Damn Hitler He's starter different. kit. That, yeah, yeah. that nigga <laughs> well, different. Here's what I say. It's like it is a double edged sword, right? In terms of the political part of it. Right, 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 right. Once you start dabbling into that place. Right. Um, you can you can feel the shift of people who were there for the music yes. then knowing find, uh, no, discovering too much about you. Right. That makes them either go way left or way right with you. But so you're but you're, you're right. You're, you're and you're out you're outspoken in terms of you know, in terms of the political, uh, in terms of your political stance. I think once you hit 50, like, what it is? I, there, uh, like any, any, whatever, like filter I had left, that and shit, no. that shit just got. Yeah, no, because you were, you were attacking, who was you, who was you jumping Probably every, you, No, you said something. Probably every You day. said something. <laughs> Running ain't singing. And if it's in the singing, <laughs> I know the, because you, and you young niggas <laughs> don't. I said, like, hey, Eric, man. No, you putting a whole <laughs> lot of shit on <laughs> Eric. Hey, I hear that. Eric, and then man, you we, in. I said, we grew up on you, man. Yeah. Stop doing that, man. You put a Stop lot. attacking the kids. I didn't say it like you that. You was attacking thing. the kids. <laughs> in the studio with the hey, Ajax. Hey, I, I, I said, Eric, come on, man. Stop uh, that shit, man. It's just uh, fuck them people. <laughs> this new shit ain't shit. I didn't say all that no, bullshit. No, you didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I put a dime on it. But it was like, it was like you were just, I mean, you were being honest about how you felt about it. Right. But you know what I mean? Like, I think I was having one of those moments where, hey, I love like I am I'm one of the biggest fan of like dope runs and people who can run. It's mm -hmm. just like I don't know, I think it's like one of those things where before the run there needs to be the melody. Like can we at least know what the melody is before you start like And I, and I know what I said and I agree with you. Yeah. But nigga had there, to say a but. No, there's a but because <laughs> because because I grew up Yeah, you said on yeah. Kimberell. Well, see, that's it's almost so, like so. Guess what? I need it. Like she, she didn't, she didn't make a song that was like a straight ahead or a commercial thing until way later. I know that sounds like bullshit, but it's almost like that's different. It's, because no, it's Ki not. Because Kim Burrell, Kim Burrell is a whole nother beast. No, no, no. It's not different because I needed what she was doing. I needed it. I agree with that. I'm not disagreeing with you. What like you what, what, is, what? These what? young niggas ain't Kim Burrell. <laughs> Probably that's more uh, accurate. Crazy, crazy. It's like it's like these young niggas would hear a Kim Burrell and be like, "Oh, that's what I need to do." And it's like, no. Before Kim Burrell was, I, I don't know. I don't. I mean, I met Kim Burrell. She's a wonderful person, but I don't know like her whole story. But I would imagine, before she could do all that, at some point she had the basics. Like she could do a melody, yeah, right. for sure. So and she had to evolve to that. <clears throat> but I think. One of the frustrating things for me is like young singers would see the Kimberell and be like, oh, then that's what a song is. That's all it is. Yeah. Right? As I was able to grab the pieces well, that you, I clearly needed you can and do use that. it and use it in spaces you, where it right. was necessary. And that's what the beauty of running, like you, huh. you well, you're a songwriter, you're mm -hmm. a producer, so you know construction of, 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 you know of, of the melody. But you know how long it took me to learn Yes, that. yes. To yes. learn to to stop singing versus myself, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. oh, they'll never be able to do this. Like, that was my mentality when mm. I went into the studio. <laughs> They're, They're not gonna be like when well, like, then they can't sing along. Like, like maybe I deserve was like in my mind my worst song vocally, wow. one of my biggest. Wow. 
And I didn't understand why until 15 years later. Wow. I was like, oh. now, see, that, that kind of stuff is, is incredible to me because there I kind of feel the same way. Like with some of my biggest songs were some of those songs where, and it's interesting how this works. It's like, you can be in the studio and you can have some song that you feel like is a masterpiece. And you just have to put, no, every, every bar yeah, every, of that yeah. song. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. That wasn't right. I want to, can we, can I bring the, can the guitar player come back to the studio? Mm -hmm. Because he, I wanted him to glisten on this, right. you know. So it's like, you can create this masterpiece and people will hear it and be like, wow, that's dope. Okay. Um, let me hear another one. And then you play a song where you was in the studio for like four throw minutes. Away. <laughs> throw away. <laughs> throw away. Yeah, you, you can be in a song where it's like, okay, we, we were just vibing on this, and then I put some words on this motherfucker, and it's like, oh, shit, that, that's the one. So it's like, I the mean. Story of my, the story of my career. Right. Yeah. A song, a Please Don't Go, have been played for numerous artists who've album, whose albums I've worked on. Mm. I was like, I got this one thing right here. Play it. It's cool. I'm in Glenwood Studios mm -hmm. working on uh, working on Sex, Love, and Pain. Mm. And I got one day extra. I had finished all the songs I wanted to record. you like, since I'm here. They was like, they was like, well, you got one more day. If you want to do something, you do something. I'm like, okay, they got good cookies and shit. I'm going to hang out at the studio, chill, and I'm going to mm -hmm. record this one track. This one, I was like, I got this one track. I'm going to just record it. Lonnie, my guy Lonnie, he, Lonnie. he falls through. He's like, Ronnie. he's like, what you working on, TZ? I was like, I'm just working on this song right here. Like, he's like, let me get some of that bridge. I was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. It was a hundred percent into the bridge. Uh. Give me <laughs> Give me ten. So he puts a bridge down. I sing the bridge. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just turn it in with the rest of them. Turn the song in. What was it? And it was Please Don't Go. Wow. And they called me two days later. Nigga, you did it. It was all street guys. Nigga, you did that shit, nigga. And I started naming every other song. Oh, oh, you like that shit right there. Don't you? Oh, and they like, nah. I said, oh, I know what you want. You talking about, you talking about that one because I put the sauce. Nah, not that one, nigga. <laughs> nigga, please don't go. I said, what? Right. Nigga, it's a smash. I said, are you sure? Right. <laughs> you know that's what's up? That's so defeated. Are you, I, I haven't been out in five years. I've been on the bench. Yeah. I've been at war. Yeah. I'm a record company for five years. Nigga. And they're like, this is a song. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that after five years of being absent, that this is our, this, this is where we go. We don't start with this. Right. And they're like, yes, we do. Right. Yes, we do. I got you the same be on story. Black Records? I, I got, I got the same story. So it had been a minute since I, I went through this whole thing with Warner Brothers where, um, uh, I, um, you know, we did a day in the life and that was a big record for me. And then um, I did this other record, uh, another album um, called Better and Better. Mm -hmm. Thank you, brother. <laughs> but they rejected my album. So The whole album. The whole album. So I'm going to the record label and I'm like, okay, y'all don't really get this album. Okay, will you let me leave the label? Mm. Will you let me out at my deal? Nope. Okay, will you give me like a budget to go in and do some more shit? Like if you didn't like, nope. So basically, I'm just sitting. I'm just sitting for a couple years. They wouldn't let me out. They wouldn't give me a budget to do anything else. And so I'm back home just vibing some songs with my dudes. Ultimately, I got another, um, I got a, a green lit to do another record. And we were in the a and uh, my, my promotion man's room. Ken Wilson, you know Ken. Come on Wilson. now. Yeah. That's my guy. What's up, Ken? What's up, Ken? Ken Wilson. My guy. So, Wilson's from the Bay Area. Yeah. yeah. So we're listening to all these songs, trying to figure out like what's the single. And we were listening. We had a couple dope joints. He said, Yeah, yeah, man, you got an album there, man. There's some dope shit on there. He's like, but that's all? He's like, I got this other thing, but you know, I'm it's not a single. They had already but shot that down. No, no, no. They no nobody. Okay. This was something okay. this is something new that I, did. I was like, I got this other thing, it's probably not a single, but I mean, I'll play it for you. But maybe we put it on the album for the Japanese release, like a, for the oh, Japanese for a bonus release. track or some shit. Like, nigga, I played Another the song. Song. Ken Wilson, nigga, that that motherfucker right there, nigga, that's your first single. It was you're the only one. Wow. Right. That you play as your throwaway. Yeah, I thought it was as just your like bonus for I the Japanese. For the yeah, Japanese. I thought it was. I thought because when we wrote "You're the Only One," I thought it was one of those like throwback tunes. You know, the whole vibe. 
we were doing like a 70s throwback thing and i was like i don't know if people ready for that right now right. this is probably just gonna be like a cool vibe on the album ken was like nigga that was the vibe that shit right for there sure. nigga i don't know what you smoking nigga and so yeah that and that was that was number one for like of a couple course, weeks of course so, you're yeah. number one Toast to number one. Toast to number one. Ken Wilson. Why, boy? Ken Wilson. Yeah, I love Ken Wilson. Man. Ken Wilson got a lot of my money. Yeah. So listen, we, we got, <laughs> Mine too, man. We have a, a part of the show. Okay. Right? He can do it. I believe he can do it. You, he can definitely okay. do does it. Okay. Does it, does it involve calisthenics or doing push ups no, or anything no, like no, that? No, 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 no. Okay. It, it, it involves talking that talk. Mm -hmm. Talk that talk. But, so it's called I Ain't Saying No Names. <laughs> Woo! Right. Shit! <laughs> oh, it's called, no, but listen, 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 listen. It can be funny or fucked up, or both, funny and fucked up. Your story, but you do not say the names of the other participants in the story, but you give enough for a nigga to be like, oh, he's that, talking about- That could have been- I ain't saying no names. I ain't names. saying no names. Okay. <clears throat> but, you know. Nigga. Take your time. I know I didn't prep you for this neither. Yeah, I didn't. You was, did not prep. We, like, no we, prep. we like to do it on the spot. We like yeah. to do it on the spot. We like to get it honest. You did not prep me for this. <laughs> Let me see. Now in my memory, I'm you know I'm doing like the fucking. Uh, I'm, I'm like, no, nah, nigga, don't say don't that say one. That they gonna know. They gonna know who that is. Nope, not that shit either. Nope. It's yeah. We swiping. I'm swiping right now in my brain. Oh hell no. Nah. No Let's see. No names. Um, no face. No case. What is that? I'm trying to think. It don't fit. Ain't saying no names. Do y'all edit this shit? No, we yeah, rolling. We can't. We can't. <laughs> you the B name, man. So like, like, <laughs> whatever you need. Whatever you need. Um, um, Jamie told us don't edit shit. <laughs> he cussed us out for wanting to edit some shit. <laughs> okay. 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 I ain't saying no names. Okay. I mean, this. I mean, just in the spirit of the conversation and being from Milwaukee, mm -hmm. and you know. Milwaukee gets cold as shit. As a motherfucker. Mm. Take a sip, man. Ah, somebody was, uh, this was, um, I used to, before I actually moved to LA, I kept my, I kept a place in Milwaukee for a while. And uh, there was an artist. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm telling this story. <laughs> Birdman hair. Don't worry, Birdman hair. Birdman hair. Come on, baby. Shit, nigga. <laughs> if, I, if I didn't have like three glasses of wine, I probably wouldn't say this. Hey, man, pull up, That's man. Why we pull bring up. all this shit. So, there was somebody, there was this female artist who I was kind of vibing. By the way, full disclosure, was not married. This was like Eric in Milwaukee, just like. Being that uh, Milwaukee B, B, B name. B being that B name. There was this artist in Milwaukee, and um, we uh, we had stayed. I forgot how we got each other's information, but we stayed in touch. And she was like, oh, I'm, I'm in Milwaukee. We should have some drinks. Whoop, whoop, whoop. We went out. Oh, my God. This sounds horrible. This sounds horrible. So <laughs> Man, I, but I, it's I, really not that bad. No, 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 it's no, just, okay. So we went out, you know, east side of Milwaukee. It's all kind of dope little bars and dope pizza joints. And we're one drink after another. And it's cold as shit. I think it was probably like it was it was it was it was either December or January in Milwaukee. So, you know, that's no way. No joke. <laughs> so we are um, we're drinking, we're eating. And as we're drinking and eating, we're getting a lot more touchy feely with the laughs, the laughs, the, the lingering hands are lingering longer, and boop, boop, boop. And then uh, we're both drunk, which this is everything about the story is horrible no, because, no, no, because no. I'm drunk in the bar <laughs> with this person. And now I'm going to, dr I'm like, where are you staying? What, what hotel are you staying at? Boop, 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 boop. Okay, I can drive you there. I'm not drunk. It's incredibly irresponsible. So we're in the car, and she says, we're driving past uh, Estabrook Park. She says, let's go streaking. I'm like, streaking? Yeah, let's do it. So it's like 1 o'clock in the morning. 
it's probably like eight degrees outside, drunk as hell. That's a great idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so pull over. Oh my God. Pull over at Estabrook Park in the parking lot. Is anybody looking? Oh shit. We take it off our clothes. We run through Estabrook Park, one o'clock in the morning, butt ass naked. Ended up in the bushes, and that's where I'll leave the yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah. Esther Brook Park. Esther Brook Park. With the B name. Oh, the B name. The B name. In the bushes. In the bushes. In the bushes. <laughs> Eight degrees. You are wild for that. Yeah, world. man. You are wild. Did you ever hear about the nude run in Milwaukee? No. This this is me. See, I got a lot a lot of crazy white boy friends in, the, in Milwaukee. So they got this thing, or they used to. I don't know if they do it anymore. But on New Year's Eve, you got the polar bears, and they jump into the course, fucking I know about that. Yeah. the polar bears. If y'all that don't know what the polar bears is, this is a bunch of crazy ass white people in Milwaukee on New Year's Eve. They will strip down to their swimsuits and jump into sub zero water, freezing for, ice water for whatever reason. I don't know. But anyway. Some other homies of mine, some of them I went to college with, but some of them were just like crazy ass white dudes like I would go have drinks with. The, every year they would do the nude run. You would run from like uh, River West all the way to the lakefront, butt ass naked. What? Yes. So you would do the nude run and you would ultimately end up at this public swimming pool that of course was closed and then it would turn into they would break into the swim pool. yeah yeah it turn it into a different so i i did the nude run in in milwaukee uh once but i, I feel like you did more than probably <laughs> probably <laughs> <laughs> the nude run milwaukee he said, he said, I, I did it like one time i know i was lying you can tell i was lying hey, when i said hey, 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 every year this is like nude run nude run nude run, run nude run, run. <laughs> so, this nigga's Will Ferrell. Hey, are you kidding me? He's kinda, drinking in the car. Are you kidding me? Hey, that's Frank the Tank right there. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the RB Money Podcast yeah. with our brother Eric Benet. Yeah. The B Nay. The B Nay. The B Nay. Oh. Oh, yeah. RB Money.